Working with endurance athletes for over 30 years, the number one area that is the most vulnerable are your knees. Athletes come to me all the time. I was doing a light training run, and all of a sudden my knees started aching. I finished a bike session, knee trouble. Well, how do we rectify that problem? How do we address our knees? Is it really the knees that we need to go after? No, it's not. We actually need to strengthen our hips and our glutes to strengthen the knees. This first exercise requires a stretch cord, either an elongated cord that you can tie together or a loop cord that you can just step inside and adhere the Velcro straps to your ankle. And we're going to place that little loop around his ankles. This first exercise is called a lateral side step. And in doing this exercise, you're going to feel this in your hips and in your glutes because we're not only providing balance and stability, but we're also increasing the strength in and around that hip. To begin the exercise, Ben is just going to take a lateral step to the left and his trail leg is going to follow it. So you pick your leg up about five or six inches and the trail leg follows. Pick it up again and the trail leg follows. Keeping the tension on the strap and on both legs. So we're anchoring with one leg and we're resisting as we bring it back. We don't want to allow the straps to go slack during each step. There's always tension between the cords. This keeps the tension and the load on those hips and the glutes. You can do this lateral walking down a long hallway, in a room. It doesn't really matter the distance. Just look at the time, anywhere between 30 seconds to two minutes, going in both directions. The second exercise is called wet pants walking, and it's fairly graphic and descriptive when you look at it. I'm going to have Mel give us a, a quick demo. The idea of doing this exercise is that it works the external rotators of your glutes, works your hip muscles, you feel a little bit in your fastus medialis, the muscle on the inside of your leg, and it's a great strengthener for cycling and running. Mel begins this with a stretch cord placed around her ankles, and again, you can use a stretch cord or a circular cord with Velcro straps that will adhere to the ankle. She's going to come up on her toes as if she's kind of wet her pants and now she's going to walk forward on her toes keeping the tension the entire time and just sort of swinging her legs forward keeping her knees bent and then walking backwards on her toes as well and repeating that pattern over again. Doing this little exercise is surprisingly difficult. It looks kind of silly but it really works your, your hips and your glutes. And now walking forward on your heels same sort of motion, but trying to go heel to toe and a little heavier on the heel. Just change that muscle recruitment in your hips and your low back. This exercise can be done down a long hallway or in a room. And remember, you start on your toes, walk forward on your toes, walk back on your toes, and then go heel to toe. Any variation is really right. You can't go wrong with the exercise. Just take a look at your watch when you start and make sure those glutes are pretty fatigued when you stop. These next two exercises done back to back really provide four different elements. One, they provide balance. Two, they provide stability. Three, they provide strength. And the last one, they'll help your sustained power. It's not just the stretch cord leg that we're going to be working here. I'm going to have Ben demonstrate this in just a second. It's really the support leg that provides the balance and the stability and ultimately the burn that you're going to feel doing the exercise. You'll be surprised just doing anywhere between 8 to 15 reps, adding a little bit of pulsing on this, and your legs are going to be fatigued. We can do two sets back to back of both exercises. It takes about two minutes, and it works. OK, Ben, take your spot here. I'm going to be Ben's holder or pole down here, and Ben's going to perform this on an elevated step. You can do this also on an elevated step, for example, just using two phone books, providing that your swing leg or the stretch cord leg is swinging freely. So Ben, why don't we get in position here? The first exercise is hip extension. And when we start with hip extension, we can see that Ben's stretch cord leg is floating free, and he's just going to go back and hip extension. Let's go ahead and do it. Go back and forward, and we just swing it up just to the point above the toe and back again, always keeping tension on the stretch cord so we never want it to go slack, and forward and back again. Now Ben has done this exercise many times in my classes and he knows how difficult it is, and the position that he's holding right now is really working at his support leg. His right leg is under a lot of tension, and you can see the muscles in his foot, his calf, his lower leg, all the way up to his glute, they're all firing. And again, and now let's add a little bit of pulsing on the back end of it. So we can pulse this, and again, that really makes that front leg start to wobble a little bit. And you can see that it's really recruiting his support leg, which is his right leg. The second exercise is a hip abduction exercise. Ben, turn 90 degrees and go ahead and step over the band. We're going to allow that stretch cord leg to float freely. So go ahead and bend. Let's go out 
and then back together, and then out, and back together, and out, and together. And let's go out and pulse this time. We'll just kind of pulse on the outside. And again, the support leg is under a lot of tension right now. And that's the leg that's really getting tired. We can do these exercises back to back, going from hip extension to hip abduction. Repeat the exercise over again, and you're done. And you'll be surprised if you can take these exercises to near muscular failure, how your strength will improve, and how your stance phase when you're running and when you're applying the pressure on your pedal at 3 o'clock, that will improve immensely. The beauty of doing these last four exercises is that it really isolates the glutes and the hips and it also stabilizes the knee and I mentioned the knee as being the prime area that we have difficulty and the vastus medialis, the muscle on the inside of the knee, is really activated doing these four exercises. So make sure if you've had a continual history of knee problems or hip problems or ankle problems, put these big four into your exercise package.